Hello friends, welcome back for another part of our walkthrough of Oxygen Not Included's base game. Let's just pick up where we left off. I mentioned that we were going to get our natural gas and power stuff going, but I did want to show our completed cooling setup here really quickly, which looks like this. Um, you can see that our water has already dropped in temperature quite a bit, probably because a couple of these blocks of ice have melted and cooled this down a lot. Um, our water situation is decent. I mean, we are pretty much filled up of all of our tanks after we've drained this other pool. So this is now gone. And this will slowly produce water over time considering the ice is going to melt. So this will hold us over for a little while until we can get the... Uh, or until we can find a, uh, something that produces water for us reliably. So we will get there. This is what it looks like when everything is running. Uh, this tank is just basically draining, going all the way through this loop, back up, and back into the tank. And the water that's in the tank will gradually cool because it is submerged in this colder liquid, and it'll keep this place nice and cool too. We're already sitting at a pretty decent temperature, but I've had instances where this started to heat up and I started to get hot water into my system, either because I didn't have another option or by accident, and this would uh, cool it right back down and my food would keep growing, which is obviously essential to... Uh, get far in the game So yeah, let's uh, move on to power stuff um, I am going to well what I did recently was I cleared out a bunch of area to place this new stuff in because if I'm gonna be Placing things that my duplicates don't need to be going and doing on a regular basis I'm just gonna put it a little bit further out of the way so that uh, I'll build it there once then it won't be in the way of other things that my duplicates might need to spend their time doing by the way, uh, if you find this Neurovaxillator, you can just assign a duplicate to it. Um, it'll give them a like a random buff. It's worth getting, but uh, there's not much use outside of that. So this is pretty much all you need to do if you encounter one of them. There you go. Ashcan automatically gets minus 20 stress per cycle, which allows you to kind of beef up his morale further than it normally would be able to. So yeah, I did clear out this huge area. All the water that was polluted water down here just kind of got drained at the bottom. This is going to be where we're going to build our, our stuff, so let's go ahead and start doing that. We already have a coal generator area, um, but this is a temporary spot. Like I mentioned, a lot of these are going to be temporary locations until we find a better place. What I'm going to need is a room about this size that's going to be for all the different forms of power that I plan on using at least that's going to be located in the center of my base. There's going to be other power forms we'll use later, but I'm going to need a space about like this. I'm going to also use about a space like this that's going to be to store excess natural gas. And we're going to go get that here in just a bit. So we'll start up there because this is going to take a little bit for everything to stabilize. This is dormant right now, so this is a good time to do this. If you don't want to uh, handle this or rather if you can't afford to do it because it is not dormant when you're doing this, um, you can also uh, get some suits built, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will talk about in a little bit. And your suits will help your duplicates be protected from that heat. But what I'm going to be doing is on the edge of this, without cracking it open, I'm going to build a setup that looks like this. And I think this is the first time we've done this, if I'm remembering right. Yeah. This is going to be an area that we're going to put liquid into, and it's going to function as a liquid lock. Um, this is something that is very common both in real life and in the game. Basically, you're gonna have air on this side, you're gonna have water here, and you're gonna have air on this side. This makes sure that the air on this side does not escape, no matter what you do, because it cannot penetrate through the water. So I'm just gonna set up something like this, and uh, my duplicates will get on that, and we'll get this all set up to start extracting this natural gas. In the meantime, and while they're doing that, let me clear out some of these buildings that we don't need. Um, especially all the deodorizers and stuff, which it took a lot if you're mining out one of those big polluted areas. Whoa, like misclicking all over the place. So we'll get all this out of here, and then uh, I'm just going to create a room. I'm going to create two rooms, rather. Both of them are going to be using insulated tile, and I've alluded to it a couple times, but the best uh, product for making insulated tile is going to be in igneous rock, both because it has very low heat transmission rates and... Um, it's very plentiful. There are other things that are a little bit better than that, but they are a little bit later in the game before you're going to start getting access to it, or at least until it's worth it to get access to it. But yeah, for now, if you need to prevent any temperature exchange, it's going to be igneous rock insulated tiles, be your best bet. Let's check to see what they're up to up here. Oh, it looks like they prioritized the other one. 
What we will also need, by the way, we might as well get this set up too. We need some water to go in here, and it can be any liquid really, except for probably polluted water because that's just going to gas off. And if the whole point of the liquid lock is to prevent gas transfer and that just creates gas, that really defeats the point. So I'm just going to use this water right here, this salt water. So I'll just kind of build something in like that. The duplicates should be able to get down there. They can hop two spaces uh, vertically, so as long as they can get it in and out of there, that's totally fine. We'll set up something like this. I'm going to run it down into here, and then I'm going to put a liquid vent there, and I will also put a hydro sensor. This hydro sensor is going to sit right next to it, and this is just going to make sure that it doesn't pump out too much and overfill it. There's not too much to over pump, but this is just a good habit to get into whenever you're creating one of these. And of course we'll need power on this, so we might as well get that, which is pretty nearby. There we go. Alright, duplicants are going to be busy doing that for just a little bit. Now that we've got this area all cleared out, let's start scoping out how we're going to be building these rooms. Base oh man, I am misclicking so badly. Basically we're just going to be setting up a couple of rooms like this. Just going to use some insulated uh, igneous rock. And the bottom is actually going to be a chamber for water. Uh, you'll see why. And that's because uh, the byproduct of some of these energy creators is going to be polluted water. So we need some place for it to collect so that we can pump it back out. I also don't really want this uh, area open because it's going to produce a lot of excess carbon dioxide over time. And if I can prevent that from clogging up my uh, ventilation system and have a specialized one just for this, I'd rather do that because it's going to be a little bit easier to maintain my gases over the long haul. The other area is going to be for holding my natural gas. Um, there's a couple of different ways you could do this, but I'm going to do it in a way that's going to be the most simple, uh, which is typically how I'm going to do these things. I'm going to set up another liquid lock that looks kind of like this. And this is going to be the area that our natural gas is contained in. This is going to be where all of our power producers are. Let's check to see if this is on its way. Yep, so this is pumping and it's getting there. Just need to deliver the wire for that. And then on the inside of this, uh, for right now, we can just basically leave it pretty empty. But um, if we have the liquid lock, we can go back and forth. Eventually, I will totally seal this off if I don't need to go back in there anymore once we have all the systems up and running. What I'm going to need in here, though, is I'm going to need a couple of pumps that are going to be to pump all the air out so that this is more or less a vacuum by the time I'm ready. In this area, I'm just going to create one ladder that can go all the way down to the bottom in case I need to maintain anything. Then some mesh tiles in there so that we can uh, make sure that the gas transfer is pretty good. Don't need a ladder on this side. And we're going to put a few things in here. Um, by now, I'm not going to talk about research too much anymore because if you've been doing your research... And, wow, that didn't sound like I meant it to. If you've been completing the research that's on the tree... Uh, it, you should have all of the stuff researched that you are not blocked by. You'll eventually get blocked by this interstellar research, which is not going to be, be happening until we start launching rockets. Oh, I missed one. <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to assume from this point that you have everything researched. So if you don't have this research as you're following along, just have your duplicates get on it and uh, we'll resolve this pretty quick. So I'm going to replicate the same coal production area that I have. I'm basically just moving this over. I'm going to need three smart batteries here because there's going to be three different types of power that's going to be produced in this. The second type, the first being coal, second type is going to be this natural gas generator. And you can use more or less of these depending on how much you want to use. Oh, I'm using the wrong thing on this level. We need to use all mesh tiles on this level. It's going to produce a lot of polluted water. Although, I guess... Hmm, no, I'd rather have it drip down so that it's all contained in one spot. The third type of uh, power we're going to generate here is this petroleum generator. We're not going to use this yet, but this is at least something good to know that's going to go in this room. Uh, once you have this room all done, you want to make sure there's no real power lines that are going to be overlapping it, because this all needs to be on heavy watt wire over time. So I'll replace these really quick. One thing we also need that I alluded to earlier in the uh, in the walkthrough is we need steel because the temperature that this natural gas is going to come out of this geyser at is 150 Celsius. Why are they not building this automation wire? 
So 150 Celsius, and this is hotter than basically any other material will be able to resist when you're making your gas pumps out of it. So I need to make the gas pump that's going to be out of here in here out of steel. Um, so let me deconstruct the, a couple of objects that can give you some steel early in the game since we haven't talked about it yet. You can either grab them here or you can grab them up from this biome, but like I said, it's going to be very hot up here, so you need to be careful if your duplicates are running around. A lot of times they can come up here and just deconstruct this, but if you can get steel from somewhere else it's more convenient like this, you might as well do that. I'm going to prioritize this a little bit higher because it's going to be a blocker for a couple of things that we need to do, so we'll do that. Okay, now that this is all coming up, we need to make sure that we're connecting this up by automation wire. I might need more refined metal, actually, now that I'm looking at this. There we go. I'll have a duplicate creating that, but the whole idea that we're going to want to do here is we want to connect all three of these systems up to different smart batteries because they're going to use... Um, they're going to basically be asked to produce power at different intervals, like depending on how rare or available the... Uh, product is that you're going to be burning to make energy. So, for example, who's idle? Oh, nice. Uh, if you're burning coal, that's somewhat renewable. We have a good amount, but we are dependent on our hatches to create that. If we're burning natural gas, natural gas is 100% free once we just get this all hooked up. So, I would rather burn my natural gas first before I burn my coal because it is so much more easily accessible. And finally, your petroleum. That one's probably going to be the one I'm going to burn the least because it's the most expensive to uh, procure. So we won't uh, do anything super aggressive with that. Okay, what I think I'm probably going to do, let me talk about a couple of other things. and I'm going to break this up into two separate videos only because this is running kind of long. And there's a lot of stuff for my duplicates to do here. So I don't want to just have you sit here and do nothing in the meantime. So I'm going to grab my steel. Let me talk about a couple of other things here really quickly that I've been up to that's probably important to know. And then we'll continue to talk about this power and natural gas setup in just a little bit um, since there's so many open errands right now. One other thing is my food has skyrocketed since getting into the other biome with all the sleet wheat. So this is probably the time that you can you can take on more duplicates when you start feeling comfortable about having enough uh, food reserves and enough ability to replace those as your duplicates eat that. Uh, Bert looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and take him. Check our skills. And if you don't know what to put your skills into, digging and construction is always going to be good to help your duplicates uh, work faster. Which means less time spent uh, doing like survival maintenance type of things. I'm not going to bore you with going through all the skills and assignments and stuff like that. So yeah, this is the first half of this, I would say. Uh, we need to get our power all reconnected so we're not pouring um, polluted oxygen into our base. So... I'll get some of this up. I'll be back with another video here in just a couple of cycles when this all starts to flesh out so that we can hook it up for real and see it all running. So I'll be back with another part just in just a second. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you really soon.